don't you think with our, our data with this um these organizations or these social media platforms with our data or having our data like our uh our valid id card and then with our images and pictures and every other thing don't you think they can or they are most likely to sell this information or give this data our images and everything to um third party sites or um social media platforms well, you know, the first thing that I will say to this is um, if any of our viewers think that that does not happen, then they're sadly mistaken. That is part of the you need to read your terms in descriptions for every social media account that you do. Uh, there are ways and there are laws that are helping prevent, as I mentioned before, GDPR, CCPA, and some other privacy laws around the world that prevent the companies from doing so without your authorization. Um, a lot of people don't read when they start an account and click on yes, 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 accept, accept, accept. You are giving them permission to do so um, by doing that. That's number one. Number two, um, a very big con of giving those um, companies your so much information is, as you mentioned, it's not if those companies are going to get hacked, it's when they're going to get hacked. And I say that in almost every, every speaking engagement that I have, um, even the most secure organizations, and I say this all the time, the most secure computer is a computer that's disconnected, turned off, and, and the plug being being pulled. Yeah. So what every computer, every system, every data processing system has a vulnerability, okay? And the challenge for cybersecurity professionals is staying one step ahead of the hackers out there um, that are trying to find that open door or open window to that system. So... Going back to the topic here is number one, a system is going to get breached. Your information is going to be out there. So being able to give too much information to a company that we do not know as, a, as customers, we do not know how secure their systems are. Okay. Because there is no law that says, and this goes across the world, there is no one law that says your systems have to be certified to this level, okay? So I can go in and, and create an account with, say for instance, Clubhouse, which is a, a popular voice chat, but how secure is Clubhouse? Does anybody know how, how secure? Let's th think about Twitter or Facebook. Um, you know, how secure are they? So number one is, a con to doing the ID is that you risk further giving them more information. Okay. Further giving them more information that can be inadvertently um, disclosed by a breach or a hack. And second, the third party sales or even not third parties, but there are some of these companies that actually have a company that is a data broker within them that is not necessarily a third party, okay? So that information is being used for marketing purposes, for data analytics and things of that nature. Let's just, let's, let's just say YouTube right here, okay? Um, your analytics within the Google environment is, is very broad. Um, so giving more information into that area, you know, could lead to inadvertent disclosures. Not saying that YouTube or, or Google or anybody is, is lacking in security, but it takes, you know, if you look at, you know, Chrome, Chrome gets updates every two days, three days. Why is that? Because there's always a better, um, a bigger mouse trap that we need to, we need to find. So thank you. Um, I just have one that question um, for you. Do you think there's a possibility of this information getting to, um, or getting um, to the dark web Oh, definitely, 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 without a doubt, it happens on a daily basis even now, okay? So if a lot of the data breaches, one of the ways that we detect them in the industry is that we go to the dark web 
and look at uh, different, they're, they're very similar to eBay sites out there, okay? And within these sites, the hackers, the breachers, anybody that's doing this will sell credit cards, IDs, passports, um, identification cards, anything like that. Um, and to give you a perfect example, a good identity card that has been verified cost them like a dollar, one US dollar to, to sell. There's times that they sell a hundred verified credit cards for $5. So that's how low the price is for an identity. So this is very easy and very lucrative for them because they do it in batches of thousand or something like that. Um, so the, these breaches that we're talking about usually within a day or two appear in the dark web. And what happens? That is just so that they can exploit that. So again, looking at back at, at our, our first topic is once these companies are breached, that identity, that credit card information, or the pieces of information that can be used for bigger crimes are then sold, bought and sold on the dark web, which then in turn comes back to the clear web to open credit cards, open social media accounts, open trolling accounts, open phishing accounts, and things of that nature. So that's kind of the cycle of having, having data over here, getting your data exploited, getting it sold on the dark web and then coming back to to doing to doing harm we've discussed the pros and we've discussed the cons we perhaps we've weighed both of them in a way which one do you think as ways the other should this be put in place or should it not and then just give us your final conclusion on why you think either it should be put in place or it should not be put in place so for me um i would like some stronger laws of how to create an account and what are the things that you need to do to create an account. I do not subscribe to the concept of having to use a legal ID to create a social media account because of the enormous risk of the you know, being able to steal uh, identities and things of that nature. Now, the converse of that is there needs to be some sort of identification to verify that you are who you are online to help curb all the things that we've talked about. There are sites out there that are legal and, and supported out there um, I can come up with a one name uh, called ID.me, okay, uh, which is a great site um, where you do create an account using your legal ID, and it is verified by the company. And then once you have a verified internet ID, then that company just issues the tokens to verify you similar to what Twitter does with verifying accounts and things of that nature, you're a verified account. So that means that you've go undergone a process. There can be brokers that can do that, that have to be secured. And then you basically use that token to identify two other things. That way there is a chain of custody of your information there that I advocate something like that, maybe not that particular company. So, not sponsored, not anything, but uh, uh, but having a call it uh, an identity broker. I do not would or would not like to see Facebook have their own verification, Twitter have their own verification, you know, things like that. Maybe have a a verification agency, if you will, um, or a verification company that does that to allow you to do to to have the the verification online so yes i think that verification is needed but i don't advocate social media companies creating that certification directly in general i would really agree with you on that because 
looking at the, the the pros might look like they are they outweigh the cons, but looking deeply into what this entails, it's it's going to be a whole lot um, dangerous if um, you start looking at the cons. You will know that the cons are quite um, should I say magnificent in terms of having or in terms of um, the weight it carries. The 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 pros can in a way be managed rather than introducing this means of identification. For example, all this racism and cyberbullying, there should be a way, perhaps if an account is flagged for um, perhaps racism or cyberbullying, or cyberbullying, there should be something done for that. Because I know most, most times, even on YouTube, it happens where you might see a spam comment or a racism comment or something. And then the moment you report the account, nothing is being done, even for as long as a whole, a whole, lot, of, a whole lot of the time or yeah. Nothing is being done, basically. So, if they can do something immediately, if there's an immediate response when someone reports an account, perhaps they take it to, it might be a bot, because humans might not be able to keep track of the number of accounts that are being reported every second or every minute. If there can be a bot that um, goes through either what the person is saying and sieve out certain words, for example, they should know the comments that are used for racism, that are used in, when, in terms of racism, they should know those um those um, prevalent words are used in terms of racism. And then once it gets flagged, the account should perhaps get disabled after a while and until, like the account should get disabled immediately, perhaps for a minute or so, and then they should look into it. And then when they see that this is really um, something um, depicting racism or cyberbullying or a scam or a fraud, then they can deal with it by either blocking the person permanently, permanently from that platform or finding another way to Another way to handle this might be a temporary um, restriction. There's two points that I want to make with that is number one um, is companies even as big as Twitter, Facebook, or or any of the news uh, of the social media companies, they do not have enough people. So it's a it's a people, you know, um, issue to look at all the reports you know, uh, validate those reports, get the evidence and, and present it. You know, it's the same situation with, with law enforcement. Okay. We, there's not enough cybersecurity professionals. There's not law enforcement professionals. Um, you know, in, in your country, in Nigeria, they just uh, a couple of years ago started the, the cybersecurity um, um, unit, and at the beginning of that unit for the entire country, they had six people only. So similar thing happens with, with companies. They, they have to deal with the cybersecurity threat. They have to deal with all these other threats. So these reports go into a queue. Yes, there is an automated por a portion that has to uh, occur. And sometimes that automated portion, as some of, some of our viewers know, um, you know, they can say something stupid uh, that has no, nothing to do. And Twitter will flag their accounts for 24, 48 hours or even lose their accounts. Um, and it wasn't a cyberbullying. It was that they used a word. And unfortunately, that's the issue with natural language processing on these companies. So that's number one. Number two is the laws haven't caught up with cybersecurity. So it's a no-no um, for me and for maybe most cybersecurity um, individuals or personnel. I think most people wouldn't even want this to be put in place because lots of people, let me even say on that, lots of people value their freedom. Another con to be not being able to um, express yourself. Um, yeah, you might, there are some words you might use that might be termed um, racist comment or, or being um, a bully or something online, but I think without all these things, well, people will be able to express themselves more. So I feel with um, if this uh, if this idea is put in place, it will just restrict the um, the the way people talk. It will restrict freedom or the main idea for it being called a social media platform where you can um, go ahead and talk and air your grievances without someone tracking you to your location or tracking you to where you live or something like that, or without people flagging you. You can. So I think that's just. Um, the major reason why most people would really um, disapprove of this. Eric, go ahead and um, tell them about your new series, which you started. So, 
All right. Yeah. Thank you. So again, you know, the, the link is, is, is down in the description. Please come and subscribe to our channel as well. Uh, we just started a new series um, called Cyber Crimes, uh, Dangers and Defenses, where we highlight a cyber crime that actually occurred. Uh, last week's episode was on a cyber stalking. Um, and then we discuss through the, through the episode how to protect yourself so that so that those you can limit or minimize your your you know your your uh, danger to that crime happening to you. Um, so uh, please go ahead and check it out. Let us know what you think, and uh, again, subscribe to both our channels so that you are very uh, are, have that information and that intelligence to protect yourselves online. And again, yeah, so Emmanuel, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, to this live stream. For the you know first or second one, you've done an amazing job. So thank you again. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome.